Welcome back to another ANA or Axis Analyze video for 1941. This is going to be a solo game where I play as all the five powers. So, the Soviet Union, Germany over here, uh, the United Kingdom, Japan, as well as the USA. So I'll be playing every single power to the best of their abilities, or in my opinion, the best of their abilities, and we'll see who, in fact, turns out on top. A few disclaimers here is, um, well, these are, um, you may notice there's a ton more pieces on the board. That's just because I own other versions of Axis and Allies. So uh, you see these two little tank models here that the Germans, that the Germans have. They have like this medium tank here and this Tiger tank over here. They're the exact same unit, so uh, don't get confused by them. Um, so yeah, they're, they're both the same tank unit. As well as this tank over here that looks a little bit different than the normal 1941 out-of-box version. This is the T-34, I believe. But uh, yeah, the Russians do have this. And we also do have some special guests here in today. So we have the Italians in the game. Now, um, obviously, these guys are going to be playing as Germany. These guys are going to be moving and attacking on the same turn as Germany. But I just thought that, uh, hey, we have the Italians. Why not... Um, why not represent them in this game? Why not? So we do got these guys in the game as well. And so, quick look at the board. So over here in the Atlantic, U.S. starting off quite weak. Uh, however, the British, they do have a massive navy, but uh, you know, in this game that is usually cosmetic, they probably will die turn one. Everything will pretty much die turn one. But we'll see. We'll see if someone, uh, some of their ships make it alive. And uh, let's, yeah. It'll be interesting to see. Over here in Germany. Germany, as you can see, without the... Um, without the, uh, those little, um, what are they called? Those little tokens underneath the infantry and tanks. You could, uh, you could see that they, have, they start off with a massive, a massive amount of troops. Turn one. And the reason why I'm not using those little little counters below them is because I have like I have enough I have enough miniatures to just put them on the board and uh, I just do I do like the epic scale of the game just having a ton of miniatures on the game on the board. Obviously, if there's like a like a hundred troop stack of Russian infantry, I'm going to be putting those little counters. But um, right now we're doing all right. I don't want to have to use them if I don't have to use them. So right now, there's no counter this, counters in this game, so everyone's just going to be their own individual mini, min, miniature. Over here in the Eastern Front, as you can see, the Soviets, they do have a lot of infantry. And ready to go, turn one. They do, in fact, go first, so we'll, uh, we'll see how, how much damage that they will do. Germany, they also do have a lot of infantry. Whole ton of infantry, but they're kind of spread out, and they'll have to take a couple turns before they push them over to Russia. But uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens in the Eastern Front. Over down into the Pacific, down here, the UK has India. However, it is uh, under a lot of pressure. We'll see if they hold it. And yeah, the Japanese are looking very powerful over here, as well as Australia is quite un undefended. So yeah, a lot of UK territories down here are undefended, but we'll see what they do. Um, over here, oh, and also we have another special guest in the game as well. Uh, these guys right here. We have the special guest Chinese player in the game. They, uh, they are represented by three infantry, and obviously they're going to be moving and attacking the same turn as the USA. But yeah, they're also represented in this game. Little Chinese miniatures right there. I thought that would be kind of cool to add those into the game. But here is the initial Japanese setup over here. And yeah, there's some, ooh, there's some Soviets in Siberia. Might attack Manchuria, who knows? But uh, yeah, Japan looking pretty powerful, but as well as the USA. The USA does in fact have a pretty substantial fleet in the Pacific. We'll see what they do with that. So that's the um, that's a general overview of the starting positions. Here are a quick look at the production modifiers, or how much production each nation is making. And um, I'm going to 
uh, disclaim this again, but this 15 here, uh, the U.S. doesn't in fact start at 15, they do start at 17. If you count up all the territories in this game, it's going to add up to 17. It's also on the back of the rule book. But yeah, so pretty much how this is going to go is that I'm going to go ahead and conduct every single combat, every single combat, every single move for every single power for turn one, and I'll see you guys back at turn two. So without further ado, let's get it started. All right, here we are at the start of turn two, or late 1941, you could say. So taking a look at the Pacific right away, we have the Russian sub moved into C zone two to potentially regroup with the UK, uh, the USA in case of this battle went quite wrong. So over here, Germans had an incredible battle here. They took on the battleship and took that out. No casualties lost quite good for them. Over here in Sea Zone 14, the Italians came in, sent in their destroyer and submarine, as well as the Germans sending in one of their fighters into the 14 battle. And uh, they killed the aircraft carrier and they killed the fighter, but the fighter, the British fighter went out, went out a hero. He took out the uh, destroyer and the other fighter and he um, unfortunately died. So I'm gonna give him the Medal of Honor. That was an incredible battle. But uh, yeah, it's going to hinder the Germans a little bit in the long run. So uh, in 14, there was a submarine left. The submarine did in fact take down the aircraft carrier. So these two troops, uh, these two sh UK ships went down into season 14, as well as one of their fighters, and that landed into Anglo Egypt Sudan. Over here in Africa though, the Italians, just like in real life, they kind of, uh, they threw the game honestly. So they went ahead and did the Egypt attack. So what the Italians did is that they took their two infantry from Southern Europe, from Italy. Basically, they sent them over, dropped them off in here, sent in the tank from North Africa. They also sent in their fighter as well as requested some help from the Germans. And they, the Germans also sent in a bomber into that battle. And uh, the UK, they, hold, they held on strong. They, uh, they did a lot of, yeah, they did a whole lot of damage. They took out their two infantry and their tank and uh, they didn't want to press the attack so they went ahead and retreated their fighters fighters and bombers back into southern europe very good battle for the for the united kingdom and the united kingdom just went ahead and blitzed their tank into north africa and came right back and um over here also they're sending in troops from canada into french west africa so from right here that the germans can't actually take this out because no matter what one one, two, three, four, five, six. If they had North Africa, then they would have, but um, you know they can't really do that right now. And also they can't send their troops through here because there's a destroyer blocking season 14. So this guy's gonna drop off a Canadian tank into Africa to hopefully help out the allies. And over here, um, yeah, Africa is looking quite strong. It's a US bomber just kind of Flew in from Eastern US, just kind of landed right here in the middle, just to give them a lot of options to go for stuff. Over here in the Eastern Front, the Soviets, they pushed forward and took West Russia with, uh, well, with only one casualty, that was pretty nice. However, the Germans, they are going with a pretty heavy tank build, and it looks like they're going to be pressuring Russia off of West Russia, hopefully. And so, to potentially push them back into Moscow, but we'll see how that works for them. Germany is going to be going really aggressive on Russia this game, so uh, yeah, we'll see if the Allies can hold on. And uh, down here in the Caucasus, as you can see, we have a Chinese Chinese infantry helping helping the Soviets out here. There was uh, there's no there's no point in uh, staying in China. The Japanese were were. Um, you know, they're, they're going to take over China quite easily, and then to get that guy out of there with his life would be quite nice. Maybe he'll help in the defense of Moscow. The, Ch the Chinese are helping the Soviets defend against the Germans. That'll be, yeah, that's a pretty cool alternate history moment. And yeah, so the Soviets, they may have to fall back, but we'll see what happens in the next turn. Over here down in India, um, down here in the Sea Zone 31 battle, uh, the UK sent in a destroyer and a submarine, as well as a fighter into that battle, and uh, the Japanese. They held on strong. They took out the destroyer and the 
submarine, but however, they did both go down. Uh, they both did go down to the bottom of the sea. So, uh, yeah, so both, uh, pretty much those ships are gone from the game. They traded, UK and Japanese traded. But, uh, you know, that's, you know, that is okay. The UK did, in fact, build a fighter in India. So India is looking very, very strong right now. The Australians also came in and dropped off another infantry into India. And yeah, that appears to be it over here. Over here in China, the Japanese sent in two infantry from Southeast Asia into Sichuan, as well as two infantry from coastal China. And they got lucky first round and they went ahead and pressed their advantage and killed the last remaining Chinese soldier. So they have a very solid hold on Sichuan right now. It's, uh, yeah, looking very bad for China. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, and uh, Manchuria and coastal China both have one infantry there. And over here, Japan did, in fact, go for Pearl Harbor. What they did was they sent in all five of their planes into Sea Zone 40, as well as sending all their ships into Sea Zone 30, 30, 39 to prevent the U.S. from potentially destroying what they left in Sea Zone 40. So... They had a massive battle in Pearl Harbor, and the U.S., they lost their battleship. However, they did not go down in vain. They managed to take down one of their fighters, so there's one missing fighter right there. So, good on the USA. The Japanese also invaded Wake Island, very lore-friendly. So, uh, yeah, from Wake Island, they'll be able to pretty much threaten the rest of the Pacific from that position. They could send their transports here to Borneo, Australia, maybe even the Philippines. Probably take over the Philippines next turn, but we'll see. But they went ahead and just went and started bulking up Japan's mainland, started recruiting some more, more units, and they got a bunch more infantry in the game. And over here, in the USA's side of the world, the U.S. is scared they're scared for their lives that they're the threat of a japanese invasion is imminent as you can see from wake island they could potentially just straight up land in the western u.s so the western u.s or the usa they went ahead and started to bulk up their forces preparing for the assault of the japanese but we'll see if the japanese actually take that battle probably not but uh, just to intimidate the u.s but big opening for japan here pretty much um, asserting their dominance in the Pacific. The U.S. fleet here that was remaining, uh, they went ahead and evacuated. And they're actually over here. Right over here. They're going to go ahead and just pretty much just attack the Germans next turn, honestly. But we'll see what happens. And that is pretty much the, the rest of turn two. We'll take a look at the production modifiers real quick if you guys want to see that. So, uh, yeah, it's looking pretty even right now. But, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in... Turn three. All right, here we go. The start of turn three, or probably 1942. So over here in the Atlantic, we'll start in the Atlantic, the USA, since uh, Japan did in fact, Japan did in fact move their troops away from Hawaii and they're going off to threaten somewhere else. The USA went ahead and moved all the troops over here. They built a transport and another fighter. They placed a fighter on the aircraft carrier. And the original two fighters from that aircraft carrier went into North Africa to go help the Soviets with defending <laughs> defending Russia, hopefully. So over here, just uh, the USA is bulking up on transports as well. So they're going to go up to here, and as well as from here, probably drop off, drop them off into Western Europe, because uh, Germany is kind of, you know, they're kind of weak right now. They're sending absolutely everything they can, all of their purchases, all of their equipment. They're sending them all into the Soviet Union, and we gotta send our troops, the US has to send their troops over quickly before you know, Russia falls. So they're build, building up some transports, getting ready to send them up and send them over there. And down here in season 14, um, there was you know, a threat of the Germans attacking season 14, so the submarine is just kind of there. And they decided to send them right back to give some extra defense and potentially attack whatever surface fleet appears right there to hopefully delay the Allies a little bit longer so they could deal with the Soviet Union. Germany's doing that move. All their fighters and bombers are on Germany, and Germany went ahead and actually built a bomber because they will be attacking the Soviet Union this turn, turn three. 
in uh, you know 1942, I guess. So they went ahead and actually built a f bomber to get ready to attack Russia next turn. The USA and North Africa, they just sent in their fighters, and Egypt is looking pretty good. They're sending troops from uh, Africa into the Middle East and into India. India, the troops in India went ahead and moved up into the Middle East. And over here, in the Pacific, Japan, they, uh, they pulled their troops back here. The Soviets did, in fact, do a little bit of a battle here. They took out two infantry, and they lost nothing, and they just kind of retreated. So they took out two of the Japanese infantry there, so all the Japanese are just kind of consolidating right here in coastal China to potentially attack into Sichuan or northwest, northwestern China, excuse me, in case if the Russian player overextends. Down in the Pacific, after they captured Wake Island and attacked Pearl Harbor, the Japanese went ahead and attacked the Philippines as well as Borneo. They sent in one transport to each of these locations. They also took out a lone transport over here in this sea zone. And they actually went ahead and built another transport as well as another infantry. So they're going to have three transports now to uh, start pumping out a lot of troops and pressure onto the mainland. So we'll see how that works out for them. Japan is looking pretty good right now and looking uncontested. We'll see what they do later, later in the game. Now over here in the Eastern Front, I did not forget the Eastern Front. However, Germany is on the gates of Moscow. And this turn, they're going to attack it. We're going to try to attack it. Um, I don't know if the odds, I think the odds are slightly in the defender's favor because the defender, the Soviets, they're just going to send everything into Moscow. You know, every single one of these guys, as well as, um, actually, we should have. Um, actually, you know, this guy, this guy's actually going to move into Russia. I forgot to move that guy in the USA turn. So the Chinese are going to be defending Moscow. Um, yeah, I'll just count that in. Everybody's going, to, everybody's going to be defending Moscow. Pretty much all these infantry and guys are going to be sent into Russia. As well as the troops and Archangel. And we'll see if Germany can uh, at least... They'll probably strafe it. But uh, we got a lot of damage. We got a lot of tanks. We got a lot of bombers and fighters. We'll go ahead and probably strafe Moscow. I'll also show the Battle of Moscow, see how it goes. And also, as you can see, the uh, Allies are sending a uh, whole ton of Lend-Lease items. Oh my god, they sent in so many fighters. And uh, I think, uh, actually, maybe we might not attack Rosh Russia. Um, we'll attack it once, we'll see what happens. But yeah, we'll see if the over overly aggressive Germany is uh, a viable strategy in this game. We'll see you in. Uh, we'll see you in the Moscow battle. But uh, let's take a look at the production modifiers right now. Soviet Union is making pretty much nothing. However, Japan is rising. Japan is going to become. Japan is going to probably carry this game, and maybe the maybe the Germans. Who knows? Looks like the Allies are going to be focusing Germany heavily this game, but we'll see. And I'll see you guys in, uh, you know, the next battle. All right, here we are, the Battle of Moscow. And, uh, you know, it's looking kind of, um, I don't know, we'll see. Well, uh, that's why we rolled the dice. We'll see who, in fact, wins this battle. I think uh, Germany here, I'm just going to probably do a strafe and see what exactly happens. But as you can see, the Russians have a, a lot of units. A whole ton of units defending. They have a couple of bombers, they have some tanks, as well as a bunch of lend -Lease fighters over here. However, the Germans, we do have a, an okay amount of infantry, as well as a bunch of heavy hitters and two bombers into this battle. So we'll go ahead and roll the dice. So what we have here is 12 infantry. I have 10 dice right now, so I'll roll 10 once. And no hits, that's incredibly bad. Um, do the other two for the last two guys. And all misses. Tanks, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So we have nine tanks. We'll go ahead and roll all of these guys. And oof, good hits, good hits. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. So they take six. I'll probably just take the infantry for now. Three, four, five, six. And the two bombers. Try this battle out. And one hit. Okay, so this is um we'll see what we'll see what happens. So the allies are going to counterattack. So they're gonna roll for the two bombers. One hit. Okay. So we lost one guy. And the Soviets, let's see, they have they have six dead guys right there. We'll roll for them. Six, one, two, only two hits, not bad. These guys are gone, and let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Seventeen, so I'll roll ten. And one, two, three, just three hits. Okay. Um yeah. Let me roll seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. For the infantry, they get one more hit. And they got the two tanks over here. And they get one more hit. And the fighters over here will roll on a five. So they have to roll fours in order to get the hits here. And only one hit, okay. So, Germans are gonna retreat. However, let's take a look at the casualties here. I believe it is, yeah, so I think the Germans slightly lost some more troops in this battle, but we're gonna go ahead and retreat that battle. That was, yeah, we don't wanna overextend ourselves. We're going to pull back. All right, here we are at the starts of turn four, or late 1942. So here we are, we'll take a look at the Atlantic. There is a massive force of Americans moving across the seas. They went ahead and landed a ton of their troops into North Africa here, getting them ready to perhaps even launch them up into France or Norway next turn. So a lot of pressure on Germany coming from the Atlantic. And over here in uh, Germany, they went ahead and actually purchased four more infantry. They're going to try to at least send those infantry over to Russia, maybe continue the assault on Moscow, or, or potentially send them to Western Europe to, to defend it from the Americans. But we'll see. The Germans are going to go on the defensive now it appears and they're going to try to stay alive it's it seems until uh you know japan does something in the pacific so over here in west russia obviously we did the battle the us and the uk went ahead and sent even more fighters into that battle but uh yeah it did it uh we lost two infantry compared to um what we traded so we traded uh we lost two infantry from that battle so, I mean, it was, um, I mean, it's okay. It wasn't incredibly bad, but it looks like we're going to have to play a little bit defensive now uh, as, as the German player. So I sent one of the tanks and they actually went into Archangel and attack. So that's why we do have Archangel. We got some extra money from that. But other than that, we're just going to continue sending more infantry over to hopefully, potentially try to take Russia. But we'll see. The uh, Allies are doing a really good job in uh, lend leasing all of their stuff to them. But, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see in the next couple of turns what's what will happen. So, um, also, the submarines are all being sent into C-Zone 6 to prepare for a naval stack in C-Zone 6 to potentially attack Germany. And let's go down here to Africa. Africa is kind of chilling. We have the Americans pushing forward, uh, obviously. And over here in the Pacific, uh, Japan is going nuts. They're, <laughs> they're taking over every everything in the Pacific. They took over the East Indies, Australia. Um, they, they already did take Borneo. They went ahead and reinforced Szechuan as well. And they're starting to take more troops off the mainland. They have three transports now, so that'll help them a lot 
in reinforcing the mainland. Looks like they're going to be applying a ton of pressure on India. So there's already three transports in range of it, so they could bring in potentially five units, as well as three fighters, a bomber, and they went ahead and actually built another bomber, which can also re reach into India. Actually, I don't think it can reach into India. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, they have to have Southeast Asia in order for them to take um, India. So next turn for the Japanese, they're probably gonna start applying a ton of pressure on India. We'll see what happens. It looks like Japan is going to have to help Germany out. It doesn't look too good for Germany, but they are still, in fact, in the game. We'll go ahead and see what happens later. But, uh, you know, Japan is going uncontested in the Pacific. We'll see what happens in the next turn. Oh, and um, quick, quick production values, as you can see here. Japan is starting to get up there. And the Allies are kind of suffering. The German and Japanese player are making more money than, you know, the Soviet Union, United Kingdom, and almost the USA. The USA is almost becoming broke. But I'll see you guys in the next turn. All right, here we are at the start of turn five. Things are, you know, they're getting interesting, I guess. So over here in the Atlantic, we have the uh, newly purchased U.S. carrier sent up into C zone 10 getting ready to be sent over as well as another another transport and a another tank the US decided to make and over here the uh, massive navy stack is here in Europe so um, yeah the Soviets the United Kingdom and the Americans went ahead and consolidated all their troops into the into one C zone trapping the German fleet right here and potentially um, yeah I don't think the Germans can counterattack that can they um, yeah the best they could do is send in those two guys and a battleship which is probably what they're going to do they're probably just YOLO their troops into that battle see if they try to get something out of it but uh, yeah um, but yeah so the allies have secured naval domination uh, at this point, the U.S. did take their troops from North Africa. They went ahead and dropped them off into Norway, Finland, and now immediately they are now pressuring Germany. Since, um, since uh, yeah, those that navy is pretty much going to get deleted next turn by the USA. And yeah, so um, over here in the Eastern Front. Germany went ahead and reinforced a, some infantry over. So Germany is, in fact, starting to send in some more infantry from Germany into West Russia. So those, they, should get it, they should be getting a fresh bash of reinforcements up into the Eastern Front. The Soviets and the, uh, the United Kingdom went ahead and took all their fighters away from Russia. They actually sent them all into India. Over here... Um, the Soviets, they, uh, looks like they got Russia secured, maybe? It's still kind of wobbly. I think uh, the Germans could still take Moscow here if the Allies aren't careful. But uh, as of right now, they kind of are safe. There's a lot, of, the Germans do have a lot of offense still. But, uh, you know, who knows? Who knows what'll happen? And let's see, what else, what else? So down here in India, very quick, we have a massive, massive uh, battle coming up right here. I'll probably show you guys this battle, but this is gonna be the battle for India. India is going to, I don't know. I don't know about this battle. I think it may fall, but we'll see. Japan is looking very powerful. They have another bomber. They could also send it to that battle. So we'll go ahead and do this battle over here but that's pretty much it in the Pacific just Japan doing logistic things and consulting all their troops into India so we'll go ahead and see what happens there and yeah that's pretty much it I'll go ahead and see you guys in the next turn all right here we are battle for India the Japanese are on the offensive and they're trying to take India from the United Kingdom so here is the board. We have currently 10 infantry for the Japanese. We'll go ahead and roll them right now. Ooh, good hits. 
got two hits. So Nekin will take their bomber. We'll take one of their infantry as well. Now we have their tanks and fighters, so we go, we're going to go ahead and roll for those guys. And one hit. Yeah, that's all right. And the Japanese also have three bombers in this battle. Roll for them. So two hits, and then uh, that that is that is a miss. That is a miss. So they did get two hits. That's pretty good. Good hits from the Japanese. Let's see what the United Kingdom will retaliate with. So they got their bomber, and let's re-roll. Um, let's re-roll also. Okay, let's to right here. And oh, that was close. Very close. I'll go ahead and roll for their infantry. So they have seven infantry. So I'll go ahead and grab seven dice here. Yes, seven. Right, one, only one hit. That is a bit unfortunate. And their tanks. So they got two tanks. And they get two hits. And they have four fighters, which hit on fours. And oof, that is four hits. Very costly for the Japanese there. Ooh, that was big. All right, so, um, so far the casualty count, it appears that uh, J Japan has lost a bit more. Um, let's see, do we continue the assault? I, I think we do. We, we are going to continue the assault as Japan, and we're gonna keep going. We're rolling for our infantry. And, oof, no hits. Rolling for the tank and fighters. And, oof, two hits. That's, uh, that's okay. That's, uh, that's about average. And we got our three bombers here. Ooh, good hits, good hits. So we got one, two, three. So all of their units are dead, but let's see if the UK can take this back. All right, so the infantry missed their tanks now. And they got one hit on their tank. And their fighters now. And the project got two hits, so one, two. That is, that is okay. All these guys go into the casualty bin. And let's see, we're, we're inflicting a lot of damage to the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom is going to deal a lot of damage if we do continue the assault. So we could try to take India from the United Kingdom, and we do have a bigger advantage here, So, and we will take out their fighters if we do happen to win. So I'm gonna to try to take out their fighters since we do have the advantage. So I'm going to press the attack as Japan. And we'll go ahead and roll fours. And two hits. Boom, boom. Better bombers. And that is, that's everything. That is everything. All of the UK is dead. And let's see if they do any, have any counter attacks. And let's see, one, two, three, four, they have four hits, okay. Very big damage for the United Kingdom there. So I'm going to, we'll take India, so I'm going to take all my casualties on my fighters and bombers, that's a bit unfortunate. Um, but we do want to take India, so yeah, we'll, we'll take it. Very costly battle for both sides in that exchange, but um, you know, Japan did, in fact, turn out victorious. All right, here we go. The startup turn six, 1943. And Atlantic here, nothing much really happened. The US went ahead and took out their little fleet in uh, this sea zone. So Germany is wide open for the taking. And the United States does have a bunch of troops ready to go on Germany next turn. We'll see if they do it. I think Germany will probably go ahead and turtle up and stack a bunch of guys in Germany, but we'll see. Over here in Russia, it looks like Germany might be able to attack once again. 
but they're gonna wait a little bit for reinforcements. And yeah, so that's what's going on in Europe. Down here, obviously, the India battle was quite insane. A lot of losses on both sides, but the Japanese did in fact take India, and that is going to help them a whole lot in this battle. And I think the Axis might slowly start to win the win the game, but we'll see. We'll see here. Let's see if the Allies can pull it back. So right here, taking a look at the production modifier here. So here we have. Um, six for the Soviet Union. The United Kingdom is pushing forward. They put, they collected, uh, well, they liberated Karelia for the Soviets. And the UK is going down on money since they did in fact lose India. Germany is kind of neutral right now and Japan and the United States are matching economies. So we'll see what happens with, their, with them in the next turn. All right, so we're going to be conducting a, another big battle here, so I thought I would set it up. So this is going to be the Soviets are pushing forward to Germany, and they're going to be attacking that massive stack of infantry right next to Moscow, as well as their tanks. So they're going to uh, not take a step back no longer. They're going to be attacking, trying to windle down some of these German units for the other allies to start focusing Germany down. So they have... 20 infantry right there, and they're attacking with also their two tanks and their fighter. And Germany has about nine infantry and seven tanks. So we'll go ahead and conduct this battle right now. So I have 10 dice here. Um, we'll reroll this one. We got one hit, uh, two hits. When you fall on the ground, Okay, so two hits from from that. Go ahead and roll them all once again. Oh wait, this one is on the corner. We'll re-roll that one. And yeah, that was gone. So ten more dice. This would be kind of easy if I had like a, a little mouse or no, a little tray, but we'll do it like this anyway. It's a little bit more epic. Okay, so two more hits for the Soviets going on their infantry. All right, so now they have their two tanks and their fighter here. And two hits, not bad. Not bad for an opening move for the Soviets. Let's see if the Germans will bite back. So they have their six, nine infantry actually. So go ahead and roll nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, yep. So that is, we, we roll these ones. That's one hit right now, and two hits. Two hits for the Germans. So these you guys go, and they have their seven tanks here, so seven. Let's cut that up, yep. It's gonna hit. Ooh. Okay, three hits, three hits to the Soviets. All right, so. Um, total casualties so far. It looks like the it looks like the Germans are actually taking more casualties than the Soviets than I thought. But um, you know, this is the Soviets are just going to be sending hordes and hordes and and uh, waves of infantry against the Russians. I mean the um, against the Germans and see what happens. So we did lose five. So I'm going to have 15 guys left. So I'll go ahead and roll 10 again. Um, one of the dice did, in fact, drop on the ground, so I'm going to be rolling nine right now. Actually, let's just go ahead and roll five. I think that's a bit more easier without the, uh, without a dice tray. So we're going to roll five. So that is nothing. So I'm going to go roll another five. This is uh, ten infantry, so nothing again. And the last five. And we got one hit. That is okay. And we'll see. I think the Germans might be able to take back this battle if the Soviets will be bad. Um, oof, but the tanks and fighters, they are the ones that they're the ones that bite here. Let's go ahead and roll for the German infantry. Um, one and just one hit. And there's seven tanks. Let's go ahead and roll them all at the same time. 
Three hits, okay. I um, almost took the, the, uh, the tank and fighter casualty, but there we go. Um, that was a little bit better for the Germans that round, but the Soviets are gonna keep on pushing forward. They're sending in their army of infantry here. So they have currently, currently 11 infantry. Remaining. So I'll go ahead and roll five first. Um, one hit actually, one hit. Go ahead and roll again. And another hit. Then we have one infantry left that didn't attack. And it hits. All right, the tank fighters. And, ooh, they actually whiff that time. A bit unfortunate. All right, will Germany hold? Seven dice. Seven dice. Big hits. Three hits. All right, so we lose two more tanks. And the Soviets are going to keep on going. So they have eight right now. Go ahead and roll eight. It's five, it's not eight. Um, yeah, let's roll eight right away. Ooh, big hits. Two tanks are down. As well as the other fighters are going to start attacking. And they got one hit left. So, Germans, defensive rules, huge retaliation. Germans will kill four infantry, but they lose three tanks. Soviets are gonna press their advantage still. They have four, and that's one, so that's one hit. We have their tank and fighter, and boom, that's it. Those are all the Germans. Germans, wolf, and they take down one more tr Soviet. So, huge battle, and uh, you know the um, the wave of infantry tactics seem to work. And yeah, I'll see you at, guys at the end of the next turn. All right, here we are, turn seven. Here is a look at the Atlantic. The submarines are getting out of the stack there because there's really no need for them anymore. They're not really going to defend against any naval attacks because, well, Germany has no navy now. So these uh, these three little submarines, oh, they're all, they're all different little colors. They're gonna go and harass the Japanese in the Pacific and hopefully prevent them from, you know, expanding. Um, well, at least just to annoy them, honestly. I don't really know what these subs can do other than that. But over here, the USA is bulking up in troops, and yeah, they're ready to send in more troops over. And that is because D-Day is about to happen. Soon, soon D-Day will happen, and it doesn't look like Germany can do much about that. So as you can see up here, there is massive pressure on Germany right now. There's a, a million fighters over here that could hit it. A ton of fighters up here and another fighter in the United Kingdom that can also hit Germany, as well as this stack of troops that have transports right here, ready to go in and land in Germany. So Germany has to be very, very careful here. And also, the Soviets are pushing forward. They had an incredible battle that I also uh, they also showed, um, so the Soviets took West Russia. They also took Archangel as well. They sent in their tank into that battle and they had, you know, they took out pretty much the entirety of the German offense. And that was awesome. The United Kingdom also sent a troop down here to Eastern Europe to, t to snag that away from the Germans. But um, yeah. The Soviets are on the offensive now. So how long will Germany last? Only time will tell. Um, the Chinese soldier went ahead and, you know, he spent his time in Russia. He defends Russia well. He's going to go back into his homeland and try to liberate some of the uh, territories that were taken from him, from the Japanese. So, yeah, maybe we'll see a Chinese comeback. Who knows? But down here in India... Japan looks like they're going to be, um, <clears throat> they're going to start reinforcing India, so they built an infantry there. 
Um, they don't have any. <laughs> they don't have any fighters though, so they have to kind of, um, you know, either make more or start producing, or start like doing something else, I guess. They also started producing more infantry in Australia. They sent in one transport here, and they'll probably send this transport to Hawaii. Actually, they'll probably start uh, attacking the USA. Maybe who knows? They might have to defend India though. The Soviets might turn their attention towards them, but we'll see. They do have a lot of transports. They will be able to do a Alaskan attack pretty soon. But yeah, so Japan still still in the game. And up here at, at the production levels, the Soviets are actually starting to make a lot of money and almost more than the Germans. UK and Germany are doing the exact same right now. They're both pretty broke. They're at, both at nine. Over here, Japan has surpassed the United States and they are now the most powerful economically, most economically powerful nation in the game right now. So, who knows, maybe Japan will turn this game back into the Axis favor, who knows, we'll see. See how long Germany can hold and we'll see you guys in the next turn. All right, here we are at the start of turn eight. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the Atlantic. So over here we have uh, a batch of fresh new recruits, volunteers, being ready to be shipped off to the European theater to fight the Germans. Um, over here we have a D-Day. The Allies have landed in France and they landed hard. They have a pretty massive foothold and they will be able to start um, start supplying more and more troops there to eventually overwhelm Germany. Germany looks like they are running out of production and they're going to have to defend Berlin with all that they have. So, um, things are looking very dire for Germany over here. The Soviets, they are, they're also pushing forward as well. Looks like they might actually take Eastern Europe next turn and start pressuring Germany as well. Um, but also the Soviets, they are choosing to also pressure the Japanese a little bit, so India is under pressure a little bit. They sent in a uh, Soviet infantry to send to the Middle East to liberate them. And yeah, the Chinese, the Chinese, um, the Chinese player also sending their infantry over, um, getting ready to liberate China with the help of the communists. So, um, Japan though, is ready for this and they went ahead and reinforced coastal China to prepare to counterattack Sichuan or Northwestern China if the allies do manage to take that. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the European theater. How long will Germany last? Only time will tell. Over here in the Pacific though, Japan is really wreaking havoc. However, is that enough? Is that enough? So they have a foothold on India. They started bulking up some more infantry there. And they also took the Hawaiian Islands. So they went ahead and actually just straight up took Pearl Harbor. And they're also applying a little bit of pressure to the Americans on their west coast. So, um, I don't know. Maybe Japan will now focus their attention to the United States. We'll see. Take a look at the production board. Uh, Germany is making not that much money. They're making only six, and the Soviets are making nine, even more than the Germans. The United Kingdom is making 12, pretty, pretty solid. And the Americans are making 14, so they are going down a little bit in production. And Japan is the most powerful making 16 production. But yeah, that's it for turn eight. I will see you guys at the start of turn nine. All right, this is the start of turn nine. Over here, the USA is sending all their transports back to Eastern Canada, getting ready to send them over to Europe. And over here in Europe, the German player is, well, the Germans, they're completely encircled. There are enemies all around them, and the best that they could do is turtle up. Um, if they attack one of these armies, they'll probably be vulnerable to a counterattack. 
but uh, maybe they'll attack some of them. But right now, they are kind of vulnerable. If they do try to overextend, the USA has a bunch of fighters that could also just straight up hit Germany. So those fighters from up there, as well as that army right there. The United Kingdom also has a ton of troops and, oh, whoa, hold on a bit. Um, I actually forgot to place down the, I forgot to place down the United Kingdom troops here. Let me just do that real quick. Yeah, they just pretty much get three infantry every turn and they just go ahead and drop them into Western Europe and Southern Europe. So yeah, um, so the UK could potentially attack, the United, United States could potentially attack, and even the Soviet Union could potentially attack Germany. So the best that they could do is build infantry and just kind of hope that uh, Japan saves them. Um, over here, Japan is making a final attack to try to take on the Soviet Union. They uh, could have went for the U.S., but the U.S., they have a whole lot of infantry there, and they could just pretty much start building infantry. They could just build a ton of infantry, even if, um, you know, they, they aren't really that pressured to attack Germany. They already have a foothold, and they, the U.S., they could just pretty much build infantry, and they'll be fine and still win. So Japan decided to go for the Soviet Union, to a final attack to try to take Moscow. I don't know if it'll turn out for them, but here they are amassing a massive assault of infantry and getting ready to push forward into Russia. We'll see how that turns out for them in the next turn. All right, here we are at turn 10. And taking a look at the board, we'll just take a look at Europe immediately. So, um, this may be the last turn Germany is in fact alive. As you can see, there's a ton of US troops landed and deployed here into France, as well as the UK. The UK does have a lot of firepower. So, um, I don't know. I don't know if that's enough Germans to hold Berlin. We'll see if they stand this turn. And over here in the Pacific Theater, Japan, realizes that it's only chance to s to secure the game for their empire is to attack the Soviet Union. So they all they did was they went ahead and reinforced Sichuan here with a ton of troops from their mainland. They also retook retake bleh. they have taken back the Middle East. And I don't know, I think the Soviets may have to pull back on this one. We'll see. Well, uh, we'll see you in the next turn. All right, here we are for the Battle of Berlin. First up, we're gonna have the UK attack first. And if they, uh, yeah, they probably will lose, but um, after them, then we're going to send in the Americans, try to have them attack the Germans as well. And then if the U Americans fail, then we also have the Soviet Union, which, which can go ahead and come in. So here we go, here's the board. We have two bombers defending for um, for Germany, as well as around 20 infantry, 21. And over here we have two fighters, one Italian fighter from the start of the game, as well as a lone Luftwaffe pilot. Over here we have some infantry, UK infantry, and a tank, uh, two tanks and two fighters. So let's go ahead and start the battle. And let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So we have 10, okay. So go ahead and roll five because if I roll 10, the dice will fly off the board. And I don't really have a dice. Yeah, see, just like that, another dice fell off the board. So I'll just go roll five for the infantry here. And we got one hit, not bad. I'll take it on the bomber. And one more hit, take that on the bomber. And over here for the these guys. And one, two, three, four, ooh! That was very, very nice for the United Kingdom. Very bad for the Germans. So they're gonna take four casualties there. However, the Germans, they have a lot of guys, so. We'll see how this turns out. 
These are the bombers. Um, so this one was a bomber. This one was a bomber. So they're both lost. And let's see how many infantry they have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. They have twenty-one troops. So we'll roll five, four times. So here we go. We got one hit. This guy's gone. Go ahead and roll again. And UK lost one more guy. It's pretty bad rolls for the Germans. Roll two, two, two more times. Ooh, good roll. Three down. We have one more time. And two more. And we have one lone infantry. And the guy misses. Then we got the two fighters. And two hits, very nice. Those are some big rolls for the German player. And we'll go ahead and let's make like a casualty pile just to see the carnage of the battle when it's all done. Um, so yeah, those, goes, those go right there. We'll continue the assault, uh, even though the odds are heavily out of our favor. So that's for the infantry, he misses. This one has four threes. And one, two, okay, two hits. It's pretty nice. And, well, we'll continue going. There's five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. One, two, three. I'll just roll one more, five. They're probably all dead. And yeah, that's it. UK is out of the battle. Or these two guys also die. And now, um, I'm gonna go check and see if Japan can help this battle at all, then I'll send in the US. All right, it's time for the Americans to attack. I also went ahead and checked the board and Japan went ahead and sent in two bombers. That's the best that they can do to defend Germany. And yeah, we'll go ahead and conduct the battle right now. So we have 12 infantry. So I'll go ahead and roll six twice. Okay, one hit, that was not that great. Go ahead and roll again. And one more hit, still not that great. And for this little cluster here, we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine. Uh, I'll just roll, I'll just roll five for now, or four. Um, two hits, so two guys. Four and a little five for the last guy. So that's two more hits. Then we got our bomber. And our bomber hits. Very nice. Okay, so now Japanese. Um, they missed, they got a two and a six. And let's do all those casualties right there. So we'll do five. Um, okay, all misses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten guys left, so we'll roll five twice. Okay, okay, big hits. So that's three Americans dead. We got our two, two fighters here. Oof, collateral damage. But they did happen to get one. So, um, all these guys are dead. These bombers are also gone. And yeah. We'll continue the assault. So let's see, we got one, two, three, four. Four, five, six, wait, yeah, we have eight. Let's roll four twice. All right, one casualty, four again. Okay, the Americans are doing quite well, rolling quite well. 
the last of the Germans are held out in the Reichstag right now. Normally the Soviet Union would be here, but um, yeah, the Soviet Union had their part. They, they served us very well. They took out a ton of German units in West Russia. So that was um, five of them, so I have four left. We have ooh, three more hits. We got the bomber. Uh, this one's bomber, so that's one more hit. All right. One, two, three, four, five. World five, so they have ten left. Uh, nothing. Dang. The morale of the German troops is crumbling. All right, the two fighters. All right, they are doing some damage. I don't think it's enough. All right, here we go. Be the final, the final assault onto the capital. This should be it. That's one. They got our tanks and fighters. Yeah, that's it. That is everyone. Will the Germans go down without a fight? Oh, they will not. They got one hit. All right, well, that is it. The battle for Berlin concluded. Here are the remaining uh, survivors of the battle. We have um, three, three tanks here. These are brave. Um, well, they all were brave. These guys just happened to survive the battle. Very bloody battle, and as you can see, this is how many casualties were in that battle. A whole ton of UK soldiers were dead. Some Japanese, an Italian fighter, and a ton of Germans. All fought off to the last stand, and... Yeah. Well, anyway, I'll go ahead and set, up, <laughs> set these guys back up on the board, and... We'll see if Japan can do anything about this. All right, it is the start of turn 11, and over here in Europe, Germany has fallen, has fallen to the Allies. The United States walked into the capital. It was a very bloody fight, but the US managed to be on top and take Germany. UK over here, they are, they are kind of down a lot of troops. They lost a lot of troops in that battle as well and they're getting ready to send their troops over into the Pacific to start the, the war in Asia. So they're getting their troops ready, their navy, and they'll be sending these guys over to India to hopefully take back what was rightfully theirs. Over here in the Soviet Union, um, the Soviets went ahead and sent everybody into the Caucasus, as well as the, the lone Chinese infantry from the start of the game. And they're getting ready to defend against the Japanese attack. This is probably... Um, I don't know what else the Japanese can do. They'll have to fight till the very end, I guess. And we'll, uh, we'll see how long it'll take them to fall. But Japan will probably have to attack this. Attack the Caucasus. And hopefully win it. And then take Russia, and pretty much everything else would be ripe for the taking. And yeah, the Soviets don't really have anything to defend against the Caucasus, so if Japan takes that, maybe the Axis will have a comeback. Who knows? But um, that's pretty much it. The United States is bulking up over in the western U.S., and some Marines are moving in. Some Marines are moving everywhere, and also uh, a couple of turns ago there was a transport the Japanese had here and this sub took it out. Um, it was like in this sea zone, it was very, very sneaky. But also, as you can see, the United States is starting to send their navy into the Pacific. So we'll see what happens there. We'll go ahead and conduct the, probably the final major offensive that the Axis have, the battle into the Caucasus, and after that, 
yeah, I think that's pretty much it. But uh, we'll go ahead and see what happens next. All right, here we are, the Battle of the Caucasus. The Japanese are sending in all that they have to try to take on Russia. Um, so this is what Russia has. They have also the lone Chinese soldier that survived this whole game leading the Soviets and uh, teaching them how to fight back against the Japanese. So, good luck to both sides. We'll see what happens. And also, uh, the Japanese do have a kamikaze pilot in this in this battle. This guy came from Tokyo, which isn't enough movement, but it's four movement. He has enough to get here, but not enough to get back. So this guy, if we, if Japan happens to win, then uh, one of these fighters will die. Um, that's just a house rule I made. If Japan is, uh, you know, the only one in the game, they could make kamikaze pilots. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and kind of comment. So we have 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Did I count that right? Let's see, I have three rows. One, two, three, four, five. So it's five times nine. I'm so bad at math. No, that's, that's, no. Five times three, that's 15. 15 and then that's 17, okay. If you have 17, I'll go ahead and roll five dice three times first. Oh, starting off big. The final bonsai charge for the Japanese. So this is 10. Oh my goodness, it's working. The Japanese are doing incredibly well. Another five. This is 15 infantry. Ooh, devastating attack. And they have two leftover infantry, which is they're not gonna hit anything. And then they have their two fighters and their tank. Big, big hits. So a lot of Soviets died. And I don't know, that was a pretty huge bonsai charge from the Japanese. I don't know if they could hold it, honestly. I was thinking that the Soviets might, but yeah, that's why we rolled the dice. So let's see how many Soviets we have. We have five, one, two, three, four, five. Um, then we have 13, 13 infantry. Go ahead and roll five. Uh, only one hit. Dang. That's five. And another five. And only one hit. Soviets are not doing that well. And we have the Chinese and the two other infantry. And one of them got a hit. And for the tanks. Okay, the tanks got two hits. We have the fighter remaining. And that's a reroll. Fighter got a hit as well. All right, pretty massive battle. A lot of casualties on the, on the Soviet side. Oh, wow. All right, well, we'll continue the battle. So what do we have left? We have 11 Japanese infantry. Let's see if they still have... Yes, they do. They have one hit there. Another five. Ooh, one more hit. And they're doing so well. And then five, five, there's one more. Uh, so let's re-roll another one. Ah, that's unfortunate. Okay, and then they have their three, their fighter and their kamikaze pilot, so they did get one. And we'll put that guy right there. Soviets are going to counterattack. We'll do their casualties first. They all miss. Chinese soldier and the last infantry. Um, they both miss as well. And the tanks. Dang, only one hit. Then we have our fighter. Yeah, which also misses. Very, very bad battles for the Soviets. Wow. Did not expect it to go this way. Maybe the Axis might actually pull us back. Who knows? So these are for the infantry again. So they miss. That's five. We have five left. Um, one hit. 
go right there. Do the three right here. Um, they take one more hit. So the Chinese guy is in fact gone. Maybe it's bad luck. We'll see. Uh, so one more hit from them. And we got our tanks. Um, roll this one again. We got two hits. Uh, three hits. Okay. Um, it's starting to look close now. Is our fighter misses? These two are gone. All right, this is all that's left. I'll go ahead and see what the Japanese can take this. The infantry, they infantry got no hits. And we have the fighters in the tank here. Um, two hits. Or we roll this one. Uh, just two hits. Two tanks are down. That's pretty good. Go ahead and roll for the tanks. Ooh, okay, three hits. It's pretty bad. The fighter. Um, just roll that one. All right, that's four. That's a that's a hit. We lost two tanks. The Soviets actually did better in that battle. Go ahead and attack again. This is very very close. Um, the infantry misses. Uh, the, the tank and the uh, fighters, the, they both miss as well. And the tanks, the Soviet tanks, they fight back. The Soviets take out two infantry and they have the fighter, uh, which misses again. Okay. So here we go. Japanese are going to still attack. And they get two hits. Okay. Two hits, Soviet tanks. One hit, two hits. <laughs> I'll take the fighters off. I'll take the kamikaze pilot. Um, so they got two hits, I believe. Yeah. They have the... I don't know if they got into... Well, let's just go with that. Go for the fighter. Uh, this one was fighter. And yeah, that's it. That is it. These two guys are dead. There's a single Soviet fighter left. Okay, this is... All right. Well, we'll go back to the board and I'll see you guys there. All right, here we are. Turn 12. Over here in Europe, the US player is sending all their troops to the Pacific. The United Kingdom is sending troops into Africa. Sending them over to the Japanese. The US forces in Germany are pushing forward, going into China. This was all the fighters from the German battle. They all went in the Caucasus, try to protect it against the counter counter attack of the Japanese. Japan is looking very weak. However, they do have six troops able to hit the Caucasus. That's not going to be enough, though. As you can see, Japan is very weak. They only have infantry. They have infantry, have small navy, however they have all of the Pacific to work with. I don't know. It's uh, Japan probably won't win this game, but they'll probably go down. They won't go down without a fight. Over here in the Pacific, the United States is building a massive navy, getting ready to take back the Hawaiian Islands and start their island hopping adventure over to the J Japanese mainland. So I will uh, keep you guys in touch with the next turn. All right, here we go. Turn 13 or probably 19, uh, let's see, 46 or around there. But yeah, Europe has been liberated. Africa is safe. The UK is going in probably take over the Middle East next turn. India still has some Japanese presence on it, as well as the rest of the islands over here. Um, Japan 
is backing out of Sichuan because of the massive US presence and Soviet presence in the Caucasus now. Looks like they're going to start being pushed back. However, Manchuria is getting reinforcements from the mainland of Japan. Over here though, the Pacific is, uh, well, I don't think Japan is gonna have naval superiority anymore. The United States is now starting to build up a massive fleet. And yeah, I don't think Japan can really hold. They'll have to start investing on their Navy in order to hold on a little bit longer. But, uh, oh wait, what's this? Oh, it appears that the United States player has developed two nuclear bombs. So this could, um, this could be quite helpful for them. We'll see what they do with that in the next turn. But yeah, um, not much going on. Japan is pretty much going to slowly crumble at this point. We'll take a look at the production as well. So here the Soviets are making 10, the United Kingdom is making 12, um, the Japanese is making 16, the US is making 19. And yes, they did, uh, the US also did retake Pearl Harbor, so that was very good on them. Yeah, I'll see you guys in the next turn. All right, here we are at turn 14. Pretty much everything in Europe has been evacuated and is now headed towards the Pacific, focusing down Japan. Over here in the Middle East, UK went in, took on the Middle East and took it, yeah. Very good odds, no hit backs, and yeah, it was very good for them. Now they are in the position to liberate India next turn, hopefully. We'll see what happens. The Soviets are also pushing forward into China with the support of the United States. They have liberated Sichuan from the Japanese. And yeah, the Japanese, they went ahead and they are attempting to reinforce their Chinese territories. So Manchuria and coastal China, they probably will hold on coastal China for a bit, but we'll see. But the Allies are really pushing forward on their mainland territories. Um, down here, they still do control the Pacific. However, the United States is, well, this one's, this one's gone. They happen to take back Wake Island. And yeah, they're already putting a ton of pressure on the Japanese. And I think Japan might, might lose, might have their capital taken next turn if they are not careful, especially if the US has these nuclear bombs over here that they could use. Not looking too good for Japan, but we'll see you guys in the next turn. Maybe there'll be a massive naval battle right here. Who knows? Okay, the United States decided to attack the fleet hanging around the Japanese mainland. So here it is. As you can see, the US has a whole ton of planes at this point in the war. So many fighters, you got a bomber, you got two aircraft carriers and a bunch of you know, a whole handful of destroyers and submarines. And this is all the Japanese got. This is all they have to defend. They have two aircraft carriers, a destroyer, and they're the last of their fighters. This is it, the last of the Japanese Navy. Go ahead and conduct this battle. So, aircraft carriers. We'll just count this, why not? We have the, the twos. Uh, one hit here, we'll take it on the, actual. we'll take it on the battleship. I mean the, the aircraft carrier, my bad. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, seven. So I'll just roll, I'll roll three. So we have two hits and whoops, I forgot to tank. I'll take a hit on there and then I'll take the other hit on this, this aircraft carrier. I guess it doesn't really matter. So that's three, I'll roll four more for the rest of the fighters. For the rest of the fighters. Uh, oh, we missed everything. And then one for the bomber. And the bomber misses. That's been unfortunate. Go ahead and see what Japan will do to counterattack. First up, we have the destroyer and the air, two aircraft carriers. They uh, got one hit. Take it on the. Uh, I'll take it on this guy. And then we have the four fours. Big, big hits. So we'll take these two out. 
also take on, I believe I have to, no, I actually don't have to have the aircraft carriers in this battle. So I could take these guys out. Um, so that was two hits, two hits, I believe, yeah. So that should be good. All right. Um, only one hit for this guy. That goes out. And hold on, we actually do still have this guy, this guy still in the casualty zone. I'm gonna go ahead and roll three more. Actually, what am I doing? I guess it's supposed to have another three. We'll roll four. One, two, three, four. That's three. So that's all these guys. They have the bomber. And uh, yeah, the bomber finishes them. So that's the last of the Japanese. Destroyer attacks, as well as the fighters and the rest of the battleships. So they do take out two of the planes, but that is it. That is the ra last of the Japanese Navy gone. Here are the casualties over here, and we'll continue back to the board. All right, here we are, the start of turn 15. This will probably be the very last round as well. Um, so, here's board, here's specific, and a lot of stuff has happened. The United States went ahead and captured coastal China. Coastal China was undefended. The Japanese sent in their troops into Manchuria to hopefully start sending those troops over into the mainland of Japan, which they did. They ended up sending four guys over, evacuating them out of there, getting them into Japan. However, um, the U.S. came in and nuked the rest of everybody here in Manchuria. So the nuke hits on five and the hits hit every single one, except for one guy. Um, however, he might die from radiation poisoning in, um, you know, this next turn. We'll see. But uh, massive battle in the Pacific as well. The United States did turn out on top with a massive amount of fighters. Fighters are so good in this game. Just build fighters and you will just pretty much win any naval combat. And yeah, this is literally all that's left of Japan. Oh, and of course, down here in India. They're kind of encircled right now, but there's a last stand of Japanese soldiers in India holding their ground. The Soviets are flanking them from behind and the United Kingdom is flanking them from the Middle East. Um, down here in the Pacific Islands, the U.S. just sent in their transports, started capturing everything. They, uh, Jap Japan is losing their control over Asia. And this may very well be the very last turn. We'll see. We'll conduct the combat for every single uh, major battle. And yeah, see you guys in the next battle. All right, here we are. The battle for Tokyo. The U.S. Marines are landing on the beaches with a ton of air support. Will the Japanese hold off? Probably not, but we'll see. This is why we roll the dice. So I'll go ahead and roll seven for the Allied infantry right away. They got one hit. And got the fighters going in. So this one is, let's go another one, that one too. So they got three. Three more Japanese soldiers are gone. They got the bomber. Bomber misses. Japan. The counterattack, I have six. One, two, just two. They have three left. They don't do anything, and that's it. Casualties are gone. The USA will press the attack. And this one we got, we got nothing. Then we have the fighters. One, two, three. Okay, and the bomber. Oh, we got four, so that's all the last of the Japanese. The last, last stand. I'm gonna roll four here. 
Then, uh, hey, last stand. We kill three. And then the final guy remaining. Whatever is this one? Oh, let's roll again. That's one. Huge hits. Or we have the last, the last samurai here. The very last Japanese unit defending his country. Fighters. Yeah, that's it. He was shot. And he will die with honor. He died with honor as the rest of them. But that is it. I'll go ahead and set up the board one final time and show you guys the aftermath of the Great War. All right, here we are, turn 16, and we have achieved world peace. The Allies have won. The Axis have been defeated. Europe here has been liberated from the Nazi tyranny. The Soviets, they're doing all right. They have control of West Russia, Ukraine, and Eastern Europe. The Soviet Union is bigger than ever. And over here in China, China has been liberated. I hope the one Chinese person that was defending Moscow is is happy. Uh, as along with his dead brethren in Sichuan that got eliminated like immediately. But uh, yeah, final moves. The USA has taken the mainland of Japan with one infantry remaining. The rest of the fighters landed in Siberia. The one Japanese guy in Manchuria died from radiation sickness. And uh, one of the tanks just blitzed through there and took that territory. The USA is currently rocking at 29 IPCs. There's, the board doesn't doesn't actually go that far, so it's all just at 25 right now. About 29. The UK is at 17 production, and the Soviet Union is at 11. Um, down here in the Pacific, all the islands have been liberated. It's from Japanese control. The... the um, UK has taken back India, and yeah, we have world peace. I um, I hope this video was maybe educational for you guys, or maybe you just kind of wanted to watch a gameplay video of Axis and Allies 1941, but either way, I hope you guys all enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next video.